we're covering really amazing golden tips. One is how to build the right systems and processes. B, the importance of putting the right team together. And C, a step-by-step -step guide on how to be a better salesperson. Brilliant. How do you pick the right business for you, right? What was the process? What were the things you were looking at to pick that one business? Yeah, so that, that's really a fantastic question, Isar. And so for me specifically, I knew that in my first business, in order to gain confidence, I've always been a confident person, right? I was doing well in sales and leadership, but to step out into something brand new and, and then be able to have quick wins, for me, I knew I needed to step into something that was existing. Part of the reason why I wanted to go with even a franchise that was already opened rather than just starting a new one, right? So looking at my skill sets, I'm not the guy that's going to be on a roof. I'm not the guy that's going to, you know, be able to repair your door. You know? <laughs> so service companies for me were out at that stage. Since owning many properties now, I've become way more handy. But then that was not me. Right? So I had to kind of eliminate a large part of options that way. The online world, the consulting and sales training that I'm in now, that wasn't even a, even a picture in my brain at that point. So for me, it was like, okay, looks like it comes down to retail. I had retail experience. I, I was a manager and, and was a salesperson in a retail environment for many years, even in high school. And so I felt like I had experience there. I felt comfortable. The brand Edible Arrangements wasn't up and it had been established, but it was still up and coming, still a novelty idea, a lot of growth opportunities with kind of just new things. We've got new things like cheesecakes and brownies and dipping things in chocolate to make it look like this type of thing. And so for me, it was a fun thing, a fun product that people loved. I felt like I could step in with my sales skills or my sales background, my team building background, and be able to kind of take this fun product that I really had no idea about and still be able to run with it and not be maybe uh, stifled by my skill sets. Systems are created oftentimes by people. And I can't move on to the next thing in my life that I'm excited about without amazing people that take up the mantle and, and I get to empower them. And so I've got some amazing people on my team. When you create systems and you got good people and you can physically step away and have that freedom to then, whether it be work on the things that you like or maybe go do a different business or whatever, that's where it's like, ah, like I, I did it, you know? It's not necessarily a matter of money per se, although it could be, but it's that freedom to be able to like, wow, I created something that's like, it's not gonna burn to the ground if I'm not here today. If you wanna be successful in your business and if you wanna be able to grow and do other things, you have to put yourself as far as possible from the day-to-day -day tedious work off the business. Now, it's very hard to do in day one, but that has to be your mindset. Absolutely. Why? Because of two things. One, otherwise you will work yourself to the point you hate your business, which is what you just said. Yeah. And two, you will never be able to move and do something else, whether something else within your business or move to a different business. And think about what Shaz is saying. It's so incredibly powerful and amazing. He has several businesses running, paying the bills, making him and his family and his employees money while he's doing something else. What enabled it is two things. Yeah. One is having the right systems and processes in place. And two is having the right team in place. And if you have these two things, magic happens. So for me in my sales process, I really, really, really believe that is about relationship it is about finding what actually the problem is. And not just because you want to manipulate them to like push their pain button to get them to buy. Although that is, you know, you could, you could break it down like that. It's really about being genuine, being authentic, where you're I actually want to find out what the problem is so that I can help you fix it. Right. And having that mindset as a salesperson, not only gives you confidence to be able to talk to people that you know, or that you don't know if you're making cold calls, but it gives you the ability to like really lean in with energy and authenticity to go, Hey, I really want to help you. And like I said, the relationship doesn't start at the transaction. It just continues because you've already done the work the, the the sales process to me is not just about this drudging. Like this is what we do to get people to buy, or this is what we do to, you know, manipulate people. It's, it's genuinely for me about connecting. And then if you do that, right. 
there either aren't any objections or the, the objections that they have can be easily overcome because you've got a relationship. So you said four steps, starting yep. with open. What does that mean? Who are you? Who are you with? Why are you calling? Who are you? Who are you with? Why are we doing this meeting? What's the purpose? What is the reason that we're here? I am an extremely purposeful individual. And so if you were to call me or call a meeting with me, it happened at the beginning of our deal. It was like the first thing that came out was, well, what's the agenda? What's the purpose? Why are we here? Now, I mean, we knew why we were here because we're on PodMax, but as far as this specific deal, what are we doing here, right? And that was the very first thing you started with, which is what I absolutely appreciated. So most people, when you think about that in the sales process, whether you've gone to a store to buy a TV or whether you've gone to a car lot to buy a car, or whether you, wherever, it doesn't matter. You, you're, you got a phone call randomly from a person trying to sell you advertising, right? If, if they can identify in a professional, non-salesy, but authentic, what the purpose of the phone call is, you're more than likely to listen because it's not just this like, robot of a, you know, salesy person reading off a script, right? Yes. So that's the open. Open. Perfect. So the purpose of the open is to understand who's the other person and what their goals are, right? What they're trying to achieve out of this interaction. Step two is discovery. The most important piece of the sales process. So for me, it's broken down into practical conversation. So you and I going back and forth, not necessarily on the mic here, because there's a specific way that you do that, but in real conversation, right? If we were just sitting at a restaurant, it would be this back and forth. You'd be interested. And it's what you're doing with me right now. You're discovering me. You're discovering my process. You're discovering you know, who I am, what my businesses are like. So the value of your listeners. In a sales process, it's the same thing. You're asking a question. You're listening to the answer. You're then waiting for the actual answer that they give to you, you're formulating the next question based off that answer. So I liken the discovery to a conversation at a dinner table on a blind date. So like you're on a blind date, you saw, right? And the waiter takes you guys to your table. You had a beautiful lady here with you and everybody sits down take your drink orders and the guy leaves. And you lean over and you pull out your list and you start asking a list of questions. Where are you from? <laughs> What's your shoe size? But imagine the same scenario and you lean across the table, no list, and you say, hey, so so-and-so connected us, how do you know her? And she says, oh, we know each other from so-and-so class. Okay, cool, what's that class about? Oh, how long have you been doing that? Oh, okay, cool, and, and like, I'm actually interested. My tone is curious. I'm trying to actually pull the things out of her, not because I'm trying to interrogate her or interview her, but because I'm, I'm interested. I wanna know what's inside, right? That's the same thing with sales. And if I can do that with a prospect, not only do they feel the same way that she's going to feel after that date, she's going to talk almost the entire night. Now I'm going to sprinkle some things in there about me. You can't just be totally guarded, right? You got to sprinkle some things in same thing in the sales process. You don't want to talk about you and, and your story, but you got to sprinkle things in, right? So at the end of the date, she says to her friend, oh my gosh, Chaz was amazing. Da, 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 da. But she talked the whole night. How is that possible? It's the same thing in the sales process. Step three, presentation. You need to be able to communicate in an effective way what it is you're offering. Number one, you can't even do that if they don't need it. So in this process of transition from discovery to presentation, there's this statement, this transitional practical thing of, John, thanks for sharing. I honestly think I'm gonna be able to help you. But if you don't feel that way, you can't present. Instead, your sentence should be, hey, you know what? Honestly, I don't think I'm the best fit for you. I don't think our product is the best fit for you, right? Because we go back to being genuine. We go back to being authentic. You cannot present your product if you, number one, haven't earned it through the discovery or number two, it's not practical. In your presentation, saying those things are applicable, then you want to communicate what you're trying to offer. And we're going to do it in a brief overview. We want to give them enough detail so that they can understand what my course offers. My course offers the sales process, mindset behind the sales, and it's going to give you an exact roadmap of not only what to say, but what to think and do through the entire sales process. So that you can elevate your sales, elevate your income, elevate your commission, elevate your revenue in your business, whatever it might be, right? Now, I did not tell you what the 27 modules were. I didn't tell you all of the intricate details, right? This part is for the overview, for them to be able to understand. I want my seven-year-old daughter to be able to understand this two or three sentence overview. Okay. Sure. So that's the logic piece. And then I want to go into maybe a testimonial or a story of a, of a current client that is able to 
better paint the picture of not only what it is that I do practically, but what it is that they're going to get out of it. So I'm tying it all back together in a way that they can understand. Emotion and logic tie together in the presentation because people buy on emotion. They justify on logic. You got to be able to use both of those things to be able to practically help them understand through effective communication, what it is that you offer and what it is that they're going to get out of it. For me, the closing process is just a mental turn the corner, turn the corner. You've presented, you've asked them if it makes sense. You've asked them if they have any questions possibly, and you're going to turn the corner and you're going to say, what name would you like to have on this account? Or in this case, what email do you want to use for access to my course? Right. And I'm just going to turn the corner, assuming that they're with me because I've built a relationship along the way. I've been asking questions like, hey, does that make sense? Are you engaging? I'm looking for their. If I can see them on Zoom, I'm looking for inner you know, engagement physically. If I can't, then I'm listening to their tone. I'm making sure that they're with me. And as long as I know that or believe that, I'm just going to turn the corner and I'm going to assume that they're with me. And I'm going to try to just sign them up to whatever it is that I'm doing or helping them with. If I'm on a car lot, I'm going to say, fantastic. Let's get the paperwork. What name is this going to be under? I'm just going to roll in with that assumptive sentence or question that's going to help me transition right into now I'm filling out whatever it is I'm going to need to fill out to complete the sale. Now, right here is where objections come or maybe questions. If you've done the discovery right, hopefully it's not objections. They're more complaints or questions, right? Because I'm not necessarily trying to overcome objections unless he might say, Hey, I don't have the money for this. Or, you know what? This sounds really good, but give me some time. I want to talk to my wife. I want whatever the objections are. So Obviously, that's where you go into trying to figure out what the problem is. Maybe their initial complaint or objection isn't the real one, but you know, people do funny things. They, they share with you something that maybe they think that that sounds good or that you're going to like allow them to get away with, <laughs> but it's yeah. not the real reason. We do that anyway. Imagine the last time you went into the mall and you went into a, a store, like a, like a clothing store, the clerk asked you, hey, can I help you find anything? And you said, no, thank you. Just looking around. Yeah. Just taking a browse, but you weren't there just to take a browse. You were there to get a brown shirt to go with your outfit for whatever, whatever. So the point is that you can then in that moment be able to either overcome or further the relationship to be able to try to close the transaction.